Uh, can you all hear me? Oh, yes, you can. I can hear myself. This is exciting. Um, okay, let's do it. So, uh, hey everybody, uh, I'm Alex, and I work on the security team at Atlassian doing incident response. And uh, I've been doing magic since I was 15, so it's been a really big two years for me, and I hope I can uh, show you what I've learned. Uh, uh, so recently, um, uh, Vice Magazine wrote about me, and uh, they referred to me as a hacker who goes by the name Alex. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, now that's my hacker handle, and there's nothing I can do about it. Uh, I can't really change it, so if you see any cool crimes attributed to Alex, I'm just going to you know, publicly confess that's, that's me. You got me. Uh, so we've got a whole bunch of stuff to talk about today on this kind of weird and wacky talk. So uh, this talk is about, really, it's about how to trick people. And two examples we're using for this are magic and pickpocketing. So that's what we're going to learn about today. Uh, I hope you're excited, because I am. So there's going to be some spoilers in terms of how magic and pickpocketing work, because that's what this talk is about, how these things work. So please keep it on the down low. All of you people watching on YouTube, please also keep it on the down low. <laughs> uh, so uh, you might think that magic is like this. A lot, a lot of people do think magic is like this, putting stuff uh, up your sleeve. Uh, have you ever tried to put something up your sleeve and like, you know, take it out again. You can't do it, or I can't do it. So maybe other people can, can but no, it's not like this. If you put something up your sleeve, you have to walk around awkwardly, and you have to like not put your hand down or, or fall out and stuff, and then it's very obvious when you're reaching into your sleeve. It's not, it's not very sneaky. Um, so I'm not sure where that phrase came from. Uh, here's, here is an example that I made using the Google uh, Slides diagram maker, so it must be legit. Uh, so an example for a magic trick is somebody might say, look, here is a ball that I have. And you go, yes, that's definitely a ball. And then they put it into a box, and they close the box. And then when they open the box, the ball's not there anymore. And your brain is connecting the dots and being like, no, the ball went there. It should still be there. And you go, whoa, and that's magic. Uh, it's not, not the best magic, but it's technically the minimum viable thing that counts as magic. <laughs> and uh, so obviously, this does not actually happen, because balls don't really disappear. And no one actually has magic powers. It's all a trick somehow. So while the person who is watching the trick sees this, sneakily, the magician is doing this other alternate reality thing. And so really, when they say, hey, I've got this ball here, and I'm going to put it inside this box, maybe it doesn't actually go in the box. Maybe it somehow goes in the other hand, and nothing goes in the box. And then when you open the box, everyone's looking at the box. So it's a great time to put the ball in your pocket, since everyone's looking at the box where the ball's supposed to be. And then you open the box, and wow, it's gone. So uh, one of the skills you need as a magician or someone who's tricking people is to live in both of these worlds at the same time, to live in the front stage world and the backstage world at the same time. No, don't take a picture of that. Then everyone will know. Oh, well. <laughs> OK, it's too late now. Um, there are two, so there's two examples. There's sleight of hand and misdirection. This is a bunch of pictures of hands, so it must be about sleight of hand. Uh, if, you're, if you're learning magic, this is what it looks like, lots of drawings of hands. And you're meant to figure out how to be magic from it. And so in this example, the top, the top three pictures are showing how to hold a coin in your hand and then look like it's going into one hand, but it's actually staying in the hand it's in to start with, as you can obviously tell from these drawings of hands. And in the bottom two pictures, you're seeing how to be holding a coin in your hand, and then it looks like you're throwing that coin into your other hand, but really you're throwing a different coin that you've also got sneakily in your hand into your other hand somehow. And uh, just trust me, knowing these extremely specific things is how magic works. Um, so uh, this picture warms my heart. Uh, this picture is very wholesome. So uh, in this picture, this is an example of misdirection. You have a magician wearing the dark uh, coat and a spectator wearing the light coat. And the magician is holding this envelope, and they're looking at the envelope, and the spectator is looking at the envelope, and everyone's looking there. But the real magic stuff is happening here, right? They're sneakily reaching inside this person's jacket. Uh, who knows why? And that's one of, that's one of the like, things that you use in misdirection is that if you're looking somewhere and if you're drawing attention to something, people will, draw, people will also look at that same thing. For if I hold out my hand out here, everyone's going to look over here where my hand is, not over here where my other hand is or where my feet are or something. Who knows? I don't think sleight of foot is a thing, but it could be. Um, so these are the markings you need to use to imprison somebody's soul in the shadow realm. Uh, no, not really. So uh, <laughs> this is an example uh, of saccadic eye movements. So uh, in the picture on the left, there are some scientists put eye sensors on people or something and they measured where their eyes were looking at when they looked at the picture on the left. Now, on the right-hand side, you can see the, the pattern that their eyes traced out. And you can see they're mostly looking at the eyes and the mouth and moving around. But the interesting thing is that they are, looking, they are moving in straight lines. The eyes don't go in a curvy path between things. They go directly, they go directly to the thing. And so that, this is one of the only examples of actual science in magic I know about, so that's why it's here. And so uh, one way that magicians can use that is, OK, so I'm told that if I imply it that uh, somehow a live stream of me right here is going to appear on the big screen. So whoever is up there, 
controlling this magical live stream. If you can make me appear on that screen now, that would be great. Go. Maybe I had too much faith. Okay, well, maybe it will, maybe it will appear in a minute, but if it doesn't, whatever, you can just look at me for this part. So uh, I'm holding this poker chip in my right hand here. Oh, this is amazing. Oh, this is the future. Okay, so. Okay, so this side. Let's do, okay, good. Oh, I'm moving and they're moving. All right. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna stand right here. So, all right, good, we're in the future. So, um, so don't, don't look at the real me, look at the screen me. So if I'm holding this thing in my hand like this, and if I hold my two hands up like this, if you wanna look at this hand and then this hand, you have to, uh, without moving your head, your eyes move in a straight line, right? Because they're, they're in a straight line. If you look at this and then without moving your head, look at this, your eyes move in a straight line. And some actual scientists found out that uh, in between, like in the time between you looking here and looking here, you are blind. Your brain doesn't actually see it. Your brain just sees you looking here, and then instantly your brain's looking over here. So in between that time, you're not actually seeing anything. And that has some applications in sneakily changing stuff while people are not looking. But one other application that it has in magic is that if I want you to look at this hand, and if I want you to, uh, well, let me show you two examples. So here is me holding this thing in my hand, and then here is me moving my hand over here saying, come look at this hand now. So obviously it's not there, it's actually there. But while you're looking this way, if I move in a straight line, your eyes can dart between them, right? So if I do that again, if I move in a straight line, your eyes can dart between the two hands and decide what you want to do. Yeah, straight line, eyes can dart between them and decide. No, but don't think that it, yeah, it's different. So the other version of that is if you don't move your eyes, if you don't move your hands in a straight line, your eyes have to follow. So if I do it like this and move my hand in a big arc like this, not only because it's a big movement, but because it's not a straight line, your eyes are more likely to follow this big arc thing than just a straight line. Wow, wasn't that actual science? Wasn't that scientific? Okay, let's do some, let's do some more magic stuff now. Oh, okay, now it's time for a live demo. We just had a live demo, but it's time for an even more live demo. So um, let's leave the camera on me, don't take it off. So now I'm gonna help bring out this deck of cards and hope that you can all see what I'm doing. So, okay, you can't see the slides, that's okay. Uh, so I'm just gonna tell you what I'm talking about. So can everyone, can you see this down here? I can stand tall, oh, this is amazing. I bet there's some person up there complying with my demands. <laughs> okay, so um, I have this small stack of cards here. And uh, this thing that I'm showing, I'm gonna tell you what it's about and then do the magic trick. Uh, this thing is about pattern recognition. So you can see that I'm holding a bunch of cards here and would you believe it, all of these cards are blank. Wow, Alex, why did you bring so many blank cards onto the stage? What was the point of bringing blank cards? Are they blank though? Are they blank? No, they're not blank. Only this one is blank. So how did, they look like they were blank a second ago, but they're not blank, so what happened? So I'll show you again. Since this is about pattern recognition, I'm taking off a card and showing you a blank card, but the card that I'm showing you, it's always this one. I'm just taking off the top card and showing you the bottom card. Do you see how that happens? So these, these are all the normal ones, and this is a blank one. So that's one way in which people can, uh, you know, since, since you're seeing a pattern, your brain wants to fill in the gaps. So usually when someone takes one card away and shows you the other card, they're actually taking off a different card every time. But no, this time I'm just showing you the same card. Here's an, that is an example of misdirection. Here is an example of sleight of hand. So here I have four cards and none of them are blank. And uh, I'm gonna turn one of them over. So there are gonna be four face down and one face up. And I'm gonna count them like this but you're not gonna see the one that's face up. You're only gonna see the face down ones somehow. And please, uh, please excuse me if I mess this up, it's kind of hard, and so please give me a few chances. So there are four cards here. One, two, three, four, but where was the blank one? Where was this one? Whoa. <laughs> um, I'll do it a couple more times in case you couldn't believe it. There you go, it really is still there. I'll do it one more time. There's, there's that card, that pesky card. Hopefully I don't mess it up this time. Ooh, regrets. <laughs> One more time. Okay, there we go, got it. Wow, you, you all clapped for that. I hope, you can, I hope you can see the extreme value in being able to count four cards where the third one specifically is the one that you can't see, but that's great, yeah. I hope I can find lots of uses for that. Um, okay, so the, other, the next part I wanted to show you, the next part of the live demo, is going to require a volunteer. Isn't that the most exciting phrase that you hear? Uh, it's also gonna require me to find that thing that I had a second ago, but while we're doing that, would anyone like to come and be a volunteer? Is anyone feeling brave? Fraser. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> ah, here we go, this is what I was looking for. So I'm gonna step over here, sorry camera person. Thank you, Fraser, thank you for coming up here. Uh, can you stand like this so everyone can see you? 
And so, thank, good, thanks for coming up here. And so, uh, for this trick, I have this scary feedback noise. Okay, I have this poker chip. And this poker chip is kind of like uh, a target, because it's big and red, and it's for your attention, right? So it's like, oh, look at me, I'm big and red. And so that's the point of this trick. Uh, so could you, are you left or right-handed? Uh, left. Left, okay, could you hold out your left hand like this? And I'm gonna put the poker chip in your hand, and could you close your hand around it? And so uh, it's in your hand, and I can't get it. Uh, would you be impressed if I could take it out of your hand? Yes. Yes, good, open your hand. Yeah, see, I'm gonna cheat if you let me do that kind of <laughs> stuff. So it's like, it's not, uh, it's not that easy. Uh, Okay, so this time I'm gonna hold it in my hand, and what I want you to do is hold onto my wrist so I can't get it anyway. Hold onto my wrist and hold it a bit higher than that. Yep. So are you holding on as tight as you can? So if you're, if you're concentrating here, you'll notice that not only is the coin, not only is the poker chip gone, but uh, let, let go of my wrist, it's not gonna help, and don't move at all. Do you know where the poker chip is right now? So do you guys know? Some of you know. Yeah, yeah it's on your shoulder. Look on your shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Ta-da! Okay, you can put your arm Ooh. and your shoulder down. Yay, thank you. Thank you for coming up here. Okay, in the interest of time, I'm going to end that early. And can we go back to the slides somehow? Whoever is controlling. Yes, that's amazing. Okay, um, so that, that's what I was doing. That's how I was doing those tricks before. I was doing pattern recognition with the cards thing, and I was exploiting the times where people aren't looking to do the shoulder thing, and being sneaky outside the spotlight to also do the poker chip on the shoulder thing. Because if I, again, the spotlight is right here where I'm looking, but really stuff can happen over here. Okay, let's speed run the rest of this. The rest of the talk is about pickpocketing. Wow, here's somebody doing pickpocketing. This is the famous pickpocket called Apollo Robbins. And when you first see this picture, you're probably looking at uh, the person's face and then maybe the newspaper. But then eventually, once you've absorbed the whole picture, the part, that you, the part that the person who is in this picture did not want your attention to see, which is them stealing the stuff out of the guy's pocket, is the next thing you see. So, the way pickpocketing works, a common misconception is that it works because people have extremely light fingers and they can just touch anything and nobody will notice or they're really fast. And if they really did have that power, they would probably use it for something way cooler than you know, doing magic tricks. So no, people do not actually have extremely light touches or extremely fast hands. Uh, it's actually all about attention. Uh, if you are paying attention to something, you're probably not paying attention to what's in your pockets. And so let me show you an example of this. Uh, can I get everybody to close their eyes? Uh, you don't have to close your eyes, but if you'd like to play this game, then you should close your eyes. I know I just said there's a pickpocket in the room, but do it. <laughs> okay, I hope your eyes are closed now. And so you've been listening to me for some time, and you've seen me on the big screen, but the question I have to ask you is, what am I wearing without opening your eyes? What kind of clothes am I wearing? What color are they? Get a really specific guess. Don't just be like, oh, you're wearing a shirt. Like, you're gonna need to do better than that. So everyone got something? Okay, open your eyes. It would have been cool if I changed clothes, but no. Um, <laughs> okay, so hands up if you were right. Oh yeah, that's a fair amount of you. That's pretty good. And uh, now everybody close your eyes again. And everybody take out your wallets and hold them in the air. No, don't do that. Um, <laughs> so now everyone's got their eyes closed. Um, I wanted to ask you, what are you wearing right now? Just think about it. You know, and come up with some sort of concrete commitment in your head. And open your eyes. And everyone look down. And so uh, hands up if you were right about what you were wearing. It's uh, pretty similar to last time, and that's interesting. I guess it's a conference, so everyone knows which conference shirt they're wearing, but whatever. Um, did anyone notice that the word attention changed to the word giraffe on the slides? <laughs> yeah, some people did. Yeah, you can only look, you can only pay attention to a finite number of things, so yeah, don't feel bad about it. Okay, so pickpocketing. This is, uh, this is a common place people store stuff in their back pocket. Uh, on the streets, if you're a pickpocket, this is not a big deal, because you can just cut their back pocket and whatever then falls out, and you can't feel them cutting your pocket because uh, the, you have a thing in your pocket, you have a wallet in your pocket. Uh, of course, if you don't have a knife or you don't want to cut the person's pockets that you're stealing from for some reason, um, you can sneakily put your fingers in there in like a scissors shaped thing and sneakily pull stuff out of people's pockets. There's advanced technology where you like use the pocket lining to like pull the stuff out of the pockets. Uh, there's, there's a lot of depth there if you want to go into it. Not that you should. Uh, also, people wear smartwatches and stealing a watch with one hand is totally something that you can do. And smartwatches are great because they're connected to your phone and you can bypass two-factor auth and read emails and do whatever you want with a smartwatch. So next time somebody's shaking your hand and taking a little bit longer than they're supposed to, make sure you still have your you know, smartwatch-enabled technology. Um, if you're wearing a dress, you have no pockets so nobody can steal from you. Great. Um, it's much, like, uh, there are, there's some disadvantages, which is not having pockets, which sucks, but it's very secure. <laughs> Um, back to jackets. Um, is anybody wearing a jacket and wants to like come and be brave and come up here? Maybe nobody's wearing a jacket. Okay, we are running out of time, so someone has a jacket. Okay, let's do it. Come on, do a jacket with pockets on the inside. Yeah. Okay, come on up. Oh, whoa! I thought that guy was coming. This is an adventure. Okay, well, oh, you guys can fight about it. Okay, cool. Um, so thank you, thank you for coming up here. Um, oh, don't get feedback. Could you step back? Because I can't step forward. Come like right here. 
Yeah, thank you. Um, and so uh, thank you for coming up here, even though I said we were going to talk about pickpocketing. Uh, I can see that you have some stuff in your pockets over here, and you have this jacket, and you have stuff in your inside pocket, and stuff in your... You have so many pockets. Oh, my goodness. Look at these advanced <laughs> pockets. And so these pockets have zips, so it's very hard for somebody to steal from them, right? Because they have this zippy thing. And you have some sort of in enormous tablet in here, and you have like other stuff in here, and you have stuff on the outside pocket. And what do you have over on this side of the stuff? Do you have anything over here? What, what's, uh, what's in this pocket? Do you have any uh, items over here? And do you have any extremely massive uh, tablet? Nobody's going to be able to steal a tablet, by the way, because that's huge. And so, <laughs> oh, what, what, what's wrong? Is there, some, is, there, is there a problem? Should I like stand over here? <laughs> um, thank you for coming up here. So when somebody has, when somebody has a jacket pocket, a way that people can steal from it is instead of directly walking up to the person and saying, I'm going to steal your stuff, is they can pretend they're talking to somebody else. So if I'm talking to my friend, I can be like, oh, hey, what's going on over there? And my hand's already up here, right? <laughs> and so usually you don't tell them you're pickpocket beforehand so they don't do stuff like that. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, so. So uh, one other thing is these things, which people use to keep their really, really secure stuff, like their, you know, their building access passes and their keys and stuff. Uh, the little blue thing that this is attached to, the way that it attaches to your belt is it just clips down. So all we need to do to steal this is as you're walking past someone, just push it up and it will magically come away with you. And the, the, stretch, the stretchy thing is very quiet so nobody will hear it, it's great. Uh, particularly if you're on a train and you're bumping past somebody, your hands are already at the right height to conveniently pop the thing up and they won't notice because it's not actually touching their body. Uh, so this is not very, this is not uh, a pickpocket resistant way to store things. Uh, the guy with a million zips in his jacket, that is a great way to not get pickpocketed. <laughs> okay, so uh, one last example before we end. Can I get anybody to come and stand here? I'm not going to steal your stuff, I promise. No, really, anybody. Just please ignore the massive personal space thing up there. Yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> Um, so this is about, uh, in, the, in the context of magic, how to like, be in somebody's space in like, a non-threatening way. Because like, to steal stuff from somebody, you need to be able to like, reach them and stuff. And so can you like, face me and look at me like this? And this is going to be a bit weird, sorry. So if I, want to come up, if I want to come up close, if I look at you and make eye contact and step close like that, it's like, yeah, whoa, whoa. And so if you make eye contact with somebody and walk, and walk directly towards them, they see you coming and it's like you're like, setting off all their alarms and stuff. And so you could also try making eye contact with somebody but then coming around the side, but they still see you coming around the side and they're still like, okay, now you're over here. So another way, if you want to get close to somebody without doing that, is to not make eye contact and instead of walking directly at them, come around the side like this and be like, hey, look at this thing on my phone. And so now we're looking at this thing, but I'm already up close and I'm already ready to you know, do my sneaky pickpocket things. Uh, one of the best ways to pickpocket somebody and have evidence of it is to be like, hey, let's take a selfie. And like, you take a selfie and then while you're taking the selfie, you steal their stuff, it's great. And then you have a memory forever. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Okay, one last thing uh, before we go is stealing stuff off of tables. People, uh, can we get the camera like right here somehow, if that's possible? Otherwise, we'll just make do without it. This is great. Okay, so it's gonna, okay, I'm gonna, okay, this will work right here, good. Um, so here's a phone, I'm gonna put it on this table. And so a common thing that people will do in cafes in like, uh, Rome and Barcelona, which are like big cities for pickpockets. This is, this is the thing that street pickpockets do, not performing pickpockets. Is if you have your phone on the table, which is something that you might do at a cafe, then they'll come up to you while you're sitting there and be like, hey, uh, I have all these postcards. These are not postcards, these are blank pieces of paper, but pretend they're postcards. And they'll say something like, hey, would you like to buy one of these postcards? They're really good. And you might say like, no, go away, I don't want your postcard. And they'll be like, okay, fine, sorry to bother you. Did you, did you, notice, did you notice that, the, yeah. So uh, they, use the, they use the postcards to cover up the thing because your brain is not really that good at like keeping track of what stuff used to be there, right? Like if this changed to be a different color and I didn't point it out, you might not even notice. So they sneakily be like, hey, would you like to buy this postcard? Covering up the thing they want to steal and then pick it up like this and then just take it away and be like, okay, sorry to bother you and walk away. And uh, that works. That is a thing that people do. Here's a picture of somebody doing it. It looks just like this. It doesn't have to be a phone. It can be a wallet. It can be whatever you want. Okay, so um, I've been talking for a while and you might be wondering, what does this have to do with like security? This is the security mini comp. We're at the zero days in this talk. Thank you very much. <laughs> I don't know if we have time for questions. Somebody in a position of power? Okay, we don't. Bye then.